Diamondbacks fall in extras to the New York Mets by the score of six to five in game 14 of this 162 season. So we're about, I'm just kidding. We're wet. We still got 140, 148 games to go. But anyways, uh, it's a game where maybe a couple, I think the D-backs like get away. They got good starting pitching. The offense showed up later, late, better late than ever. It's just a uh, situational baseball in the final inning came back to bite them kind of thing. So anyways, uh, Zach Gallon on the mound against David Peterson. Both starting pitchers were shoving in this one. Gallon one run in five innings with seven strikeouts. Off to a pretty good start. Like I mean, the starting rotation has been pretty solid. Save for uh, uh, Bumgarner's been having trouble with the walks. That's about the only thing you can really say about the rotation's problem right now. And trying to figure out the long term solution for the fi fifth rotation spot, or as I like to call it, the rotation spot being kept warm for Ryan Nelson. That's my opinion of the fifth, fifth spot in the rotations. Like Ryan, Ryan Nelson's future rotation spot. Interesting which is currently occupied by Humberto Castellanos, who will be starting tomorrow. But uh, aside from that, um, kind of have like, a few nice things, just need to put it together kind of thing. You're almost there. Dude, how, how well they competed in this game is definitely an encouraging sign. So after Gallon came in, after the bullpen came in, Mets got two runs off Oliver Perez. Oliver Perez, and it's just like a, if he continues to give up runs, what do you do with that uh, roster spot? I don't know if you immediately hand it back to Caleb Smith, although I think Smith is probably best served to be a one inning reliever guy as opposed to a starter or a long man. Be interesting to see what happens there. So like a three to six out guy. I think in a short stint, he, they might be able to get more value out of him. But alternatively, they could also Actually, it might be too early to convert Mar Corbin Martin to a full-time reliever. That's another option they could go with that roster spot, but it's like there's not really one to call up at this moment. Although uh, DFA Perez, you have a 40-man roster spot. Mitchell Stumpo maybe is an option as well, but uh, I don't think they would pitch him in the sixth inning kind of thing, and I think they like having an additional left-handed reliever and not cut with their pants down in certain times of the game. Team's already called up Ryan Nelson, so they don't have real... I mean, sorry, not Ryan Nelson. Kyle Nelson. Their names are close. So Nelson's already there. I, I think Nelson should probably get more of those opportunities. Besides from that. So, down 5-1 in the seventh. They scratch across a run. Dalton Varsha sack fly in the seventh. Christian Walk... Eighth inning, Cooper Hummel double scores on Christian Walker's two-run homer. Walker, uh, who's been beat by up and in fastballs, he actually got a hold of one and knocked it into the D-backs bullpen to make it a one-run game. And then uh, ninth inning down to their final out. Varsha 1-0. Tries it. Diaz tries to get uh, throws a BP slider and Varsha hits it just over the fence. And Mar Starling Marte's glove. The distance had to be about this much in the real real life. The difference between an out and a game tying homer. Then the game went extras. I thought Melanson didn't pitch poorly. He got a bit unlucky, obviously, with the uh, first batter. One hop, ground ball right to Cattell Marte. Marte thought about, looked at third base, but uh, decided to take the out. That was a situation where you take the out there and you figure out what to do next. And the next batter, Brandon Nimmo. Oh, I think Melanson runs a 2-2 two -two count. Melant and he hit, and he hits a soft one hop line drive that Ahmed kind of kicks out there at shortstop, but he's able to... But McNeil's not able to score on the play, and Mohamed's able to get Nimmo out at first. And then third batter, Starling Marte, ground ball down the third baseline. Davidson, uh, Davidson was going to have to make a tremendous throw to get Marte out there. Initially, it was ruled out, but then replay overturned it to safe. One of those things, I think he beat him by maybe like two or three, mil, uh, maybe like 0.2 or 0.3 mil, um, seconds, like, a couple hundred milliseconds, maybe, is the difference between safe and out there. And also Marte hitting the front of the base. So, fundamentals, nonetheless. Uh, that's about it. Uh, so, Marte's able to leg out a ground ball to third base, although Davidson made that play close. With the ridiculous throw, 
that was like a 150 foot throw and he almost nabbed Marte at first. That would have probably would have been a much different game if that happened, but just couldn't quite get. It's just one of those things where it's like bad luck. Then we go ninth and then we go bottom half of the inning. They face Seth Lugo. Cooper Hummel for the first time. I think I've seen this year actually looked overwhelmed in an at bat. This year, so he's doing fine. He just had a bat. It just had a. He got overpowered in that bat. Seth Lugo's curveball is legit. Probably the best curveball from any reliever in the game right now. And then uh, Marte comes up, swung at a couple bad ones. Eventually works. Uh, I think he works a two-two count. And then the worst strike call on a pitch down at his ankle. A strike call on a pitch down in his ankles. You can watch the. Re I don't know if there's a replay of it or something, but uh, that ball's. Chin high, I think, on the broadcast. I say ankle high for hyperbole, but that bitch was at least a good foot below the strike zone. He was called out on that one. I think depending on the manager, you might see a manager get tossed or yelled at the umpire kind of thing. That was just that that's going down as one of the worst strike call I've ever seen. And there were some pretty bad strike calls <laughs> against David Ortiz against the Yankees. But I digress. So the next batter, Matt Davidson. I thought he was overmatched in this at bat, but Davidson eventually works a walk. Really good at bat by him. And then Walker comes up, hits a fastball hit, gets under it, and flies out to center field. They definitely battled to the last pitch, which is something I wasn't sure about a week ago. So, yeah, so that's pretty much it for that one. So there will be growing. Uh, New Mexico will be in for a bit of a rough game tomorrow. I said, uh, Castellanos is one of those guys that looks terrible, but somehow gets results. Kind of thing. So I expect him to be somewhat in the game. And then, uh, see what happens. I said, there's a, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of sifting of roster spots in the next couple of weeks. Kind of like, okay, does this guy go down or this guy go down? Kind of thing where you look at, uh, they're going to shrink down to 26. Obviously, they're going to at 14 and 14. They're probably going to take one hitter. They have to take one hitter and one pitcher. Kind of ordeal. Like I said, two games left in the series. Still chances to win it. We'll see what the DX do in the second game. 